So next sample. So this is of um, a bowed Central Asian lute called a sato. It's an Uzbek instrument. And, um, and this sample is performed by uh, Turgun Alamatov. He's a significant figure in uh, Uzbek classical music. And um, one, of his, uh, in, one of his innovations is to use um, Indian, Indian, uh, Indian music phrasing in some of his pieces that he brought into traditional Uzbek music. So you'll hear some, you'll hear some Indian, Northern Indian style phrasing in this piece. And uh, the interesting thing about this piece that I found exciting, I'm going to do a solo uh, arrangement of this and kind of add my own thing to it. But the technique that I'm going to use that he uses, listen for this, you'll notice he's bowing and he'll be bowing a note. So picture this, you're bowing a note with your right hand, right? And then you're fingering a note with your left hand. But then there's also these open strings that he plucks that you hear while he's bowing the note. So either he's got his buddy you know, plucking the open strings while he's bowing a note, or he's doing it with his left hand, which is pretty challenging. Okay, so um, two other samples here I wanted to play for you. Um, uh, there's also archaeological evidence that the Silk Road evolved not only in a southern route, but also to the north, um, up into the Mongolian region. And so I wanted to include in this tonight a tube and throat singing piece. Um, you guys have may have, has anyone heard of tube and throat singing? Yeah, Bay Area audience, right? <laughs> so it's, it's one of those traditions that has gotten more, uh, more attention than other Central Asian traditions for whatever reason, but um, it's a great, it's a really great style. And, Note in this too that um, uh, there, there's I didn't find any information or proof that of how old tube and throat singing was. I just pictured it as being some you know, kind of an ancient thing that it could have been done many thousands of years ago. Certainly, um, possibly before instrumental traditions, because you're using your voice, and um, it just seemed like something that could be from an ancient time to me. So I wouldn't include it. And we did a piece. We'll be doing a piece that's inspired by it later. Um, but note in this as well. Um, an interesting link, remember we talked about the Egyptian oboe having that one solid horn that played a drone note and then the melody. We've heard that in the, the Ali Jihad Rasi piece. Now we're going to hear it again, the same concept except in Tuvan throat singing where a note, uh, he's singing this really low note and then doing a melody is over top of it with uh, the harmonics of his voice. So it's, it's the same kind of concept, but um, you know, done in a completely different way. And uh, it's also interesting to note as well that the way they do this with their voice, there's a there's a similar um, there's a similar pitch set that all tube and throat singers kind of use because it's just a part of their vocal cords and it's this particular scale. So we've the piece that we're going to do later is um, uses that that scalar relationship of the notes that they use to get their uh, higher harmonics in their voice, and that's also a concept we'll be talking about too with um, the trumpet example uh, where Chris is going to emulate what the ancient trumpet could have sounded like. So here's tube and throat singing. This is a uh, Fedor Tao. So you guys hear that? Hear the uh, overtones going? Yeah, it's amazing. There's other um, Central Asian uh, similar styles to singing like this that don't use the overtones. Um, 
But this is, I, I, that's kind of amazing when they do that. So the, um, this last, so one more sample, then we're gonna get to our performance. And um, this last sample is of uh, an Armenian duduk, or two Armenian duduks. And a duduk is a, um, is a reed instrument, and it's, um, it's a double reed instrument, excuse me. And uh, it's very common in Armenian music. And it's, uh, it is a descendant of the ancient Egyptian, um, ancient Egyptian uh, double oboe, or possibly double clarinet. And what's, let me put this up. There's a picture of, picture of a duduk. And um, this piece uses that same example of using a drone and then melodies over top of it. You'll hear one duduk player playing a drone and then the other duduk player playing the melody. And um, this harkens back to that Egyptian oboe um, concept of having one note being played and then a melody on top of it. And this is actually a very specific um, uh, example of that. And we'll do a piece later that's inspired on this. So two instruments. Did you guys hear the drone and the melody above it? Yep. So those are the samples for tonight. We're going to get to our playing our pieces now. Thanks so much for listening and being here for this. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope that gave you a good, uh, uh, a different viewpoint on the connections between the ancient lapis lazuli stone, how it came from Central Asia, nor uh, northeastern Afghanistan, all the way down to Egypt. That trade influenced then the development of musical instruments and how musical instruments came to ancient Egypt. Are you guys coming up? Come on up, we're gonna start playing. And, um, and from there, we're gonna um, perform these pieces that are based on the modern Silk Road region traditions that evolved from those ancient instruments.